Nigerians groan as higher fuel prices shrink incomes, worsen poverty. Federal government set to sanction trade associations hiking food prices excessively. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Don't forget that we will also be visiting the press to see what headlines made it to the front pages of the newspapers. Today is Thursday and we zero in on everything business. Whether we're talking business or not, we want your mindset to be on business. We do hope that whatever you're doing now is bringing some returns to you. But today, like we've said, we're going to be looking at people who excessively hike their prices and also what has happened to Nigerians or what is happening to Nigerians as the fuel uh, prices go higher and higher. Remember that uh, just a two days ago, uh, the fuel was sold at 617 naira in some places and in some places uh, 700 naira we also know that not only that we also have um, dollar rising and rising and according to what has been said it is the market forces that uh, are causing the hike in the fuel price and now dollar is also going higher and higher i think we've heard had a situation where the dollar has been sold i think yesterday for up to 850 and above in the INE window. So uh, whatever is happening in Nigeria, some people have said that if you are patriotic, you will be patient enough. Okay, we are all patriotic. Let's see how much the patience will take us. But we do hope that there won't be any uprising from anywhere and solutions to all the problems we're finding will come as soon as possible. And then when we go on to uh, seeing what is trending on the news, we find one of the stories caught threatens arrest warrant against detained CBN governor Emefele. If you haven't read that, the federal high court sitting in Abuja on Wednesday warned that it would issue an arrest warrant against the detained suspended governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Godwin M. Mefile, over his failure to appear in court to explain circumstances surrounding the $53 million judgment debt arising from the Paris Club refund. Also, M. Mefile, who was suspended as a CBN governor by President Bola Tinubu and subsequently arrested by the Department of State Services, DSS, has since remained in detention facility of the Nigeria Secret Police for over one month, despite several court orders that directed his release. Justice Inyangiko on Wednesday ordered Emefele to appear on the next adjourned date. Emefele's counsel, Aodu Anuga, uh, prayed for the court to give his client another opportunity because they had been unable to reach him since the last order directing him to appear in court. Anuga told the court that all efforts to communicate to uh, the court or the court's directive to Emefele were unsuccessful and Justice Eko had on October 20, 2022 ordered the CBN governor to appear in court on January 18 after his alleged refusal to obey the court's order to pay the judgment debt in favor of the legal practitioner Joe Agi. And Agi had dragged uh, Linus International Limited Minister of Finance CBN and uh, Mr. Emefele to court at first, as first fought judgment debtors, respectively, uh, following the application for garnishment made by him as judgment creditor in the case. The dispute stems from an alleged $70 million judgment against Linus International Limited for the lawyers that is Joagi assistance with the Paris Club refund. And MFLA was said to have only released $17 million, leaving an unpaid balance of $53 million. On January 18, proceedings could not go on as scheduled when the matter was called, prompting the new court to, or the court rather, to adjourn the case till March 20 before it was fixed for June 6 again. On June 6, the judge ordered MFLA to appear before it on July 19, 20. 23. Upon resumed hearing on Wednesday, Ayodele Orotiowa, who uh, appeared for Agi, was about to make a submission when Justice Eko asked the Mephiles lawyer if he had complied 
with the order. Remember, this thing started when MFLA was still a free man and still in charge of the Central Bank of Nigeria, and now he is in custody of the DSS. Eko asked how long the court would wait for MFLA since 2017 when the suit was filed. The judge consequently adjourned the matter until October 31 for the CBN and MFLA to show cause why an arrest warrant should not be issued against the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. So right now he may have an excuse that uh, he is in detention of the DSS and he cannot appear before the court. But it started way before that time and maybe he thought it was, he was always going to be a free man. But right now he is in custody. So when the court is making pronouncements, they should also appeal to the DSS if that is uh, what can be done by the courts. Otherwise, how can you uh, whip a dead horse as it is? If he's in detention and cannot be released by the DSS to come appear before the court, then at this time it is not his fault. But prior to this time, it was his fault that he did not come. But right now, it may not just be in his hands to do what he's supposed to do. Well, but well, we do hope he appears and explains uh, whatever happened uh, with the $53 million that he was supposed to release and he did not release and he only released $17 million of the lump sum that he was supposed to release and uh, $53 million is still pending. Now, the House of Reps uh, have rejected a motion seeking to stop increase in the price of fuel. I don't know. If you don't understand this story, it might sound somehow to you uh, because the House of Representatives yesterday, uh, which was July 19, rejected a motion to stop the increase in the price of premium motor spirit that we call uh, petrol or fuel and revert to the old price of 537 naira per litre. Not the old price of 190 naira or 200 naira. The, whole, the House instead agreed to investigate the sudden increase in the price of PMS and the resultant increase in transport fares across the country. The House said since it has already resolved to investigate the increase and that stopping the increase of the fuel price by accepting the motion will amount to preempting the work of the investigative committee. Okay. So, in a motion of urgent public importance by Honorable Ikenga Ugo Chinyere, the House asked the Group Managing Director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, Medicare, and Oil Marketers to appear before an ad hoc committee to explain the increase. So, the House cannot uh, intervene at this point because uh, uh, the, the, a committee has been set and let them investigate and see what happened that now the prices are going higher and higher. Like Melikari explained the other day, it's market forces causing all of this. So what really is the market force here in Nigeria? Like I was asking our guests yesterday, can we really say these are market forces when there seem to be a partial monopoly of who brings fuel into the country and who cannot bring fuel into the country? And one of my guests also rightly pointed out that um, if you want uh, the market forces to be really operational, you should let anyone who can afford it uh, import the product into the country. But now you're giving licenses, and so far we've heard that uh, uh, Dangote and five unnamed uh, companies have been given licenses to import this petrol. This is a small uh, click. This is a small click that might turn into a cabal and set the prices according to how they want it to be, because in a capitalist economy, Everything is about profit. And so profits must be made, no matter how much it is. It's like, you know, people who sell oranges, they go and buy a full um, stand of orange, a full tree of orange for maybe 500 or 1,000 naira, and then come back to be selling one fruit for 100 naira or two fruits for 100 naira. It's crazy the kind of uh, uh, profit that they want to make. And also, maybe that's what gave rise to uh, what we're going to be discussing now about the fact that some people indiscriminately just hike the prices of foodstuff and the government wants to look into the issue. Well, uh, whatever the case may be, we're praying for a peaceful Nigeria till December. We're praying for a better Nigeria after maybe the first three months of the, first, uh, the present administration. We're praying for a Nigeria we can be proud of. We're praying for a Nigeria whose passport you can take out of this country and people respect it. 
not now that the passport is being banned from a lot of countries and they don't just want to see the green passport that we carry all around. What has bastardized the name of Nigeria that used to be the giant of Africa that still prides itself as the giant of Africa? Has the giant lost its knees that is now walking and crawling rather than walking and running like it should be? Has it lost its muscles that it cannot carry the continent again as it used to carry then? ECOWAS was bowing before Nigeria as it were. The AU or OAU were bowing to Nigeria as it were because he or, or Nigeria was the big brother or the big sister as the case may be. Now we don't seem to have that. If you find out flights from Benin Republic to London and you see flights from Nigeria to London, which is almost like the same journey, you will be shocked at the difference in price. So, if you can trek into Benin Republic and get a flight to London, if you need to Jakba, maybe that's what you need to do. But we are hoping for a better Nigeria and all hands must be on deck. No matter how angry we might be, uh, like an adage says, an African adage says, no matter how angry the mouse eats, or the mouse is rather, it will not stop the cat from eating it. No matter how angry the mouse is, it cannot stop the cat from eating it. So the mouse cannot come and frown at the, at the cat and the cat says, okay, because you're frowned, I'm not going to eat you. So you just have to run. So whatever the situation may be, what will be will be. But what we can control, let's try to control that in a peaceful way and make sure our country moves from glory to glory and to glory. Well, the show we hope is going to be very interesting this morning. Uh, it didn't rain this morning as it has been raining uh, so many other days, but it didn't rain this morning, at least from the axis I came from to work. I don't know how it is in your area. And the traffic was quite, was quite free. So we thank God for small messes. Uh, some people would say it is because that so many cars are not on the road anymore. But I choose to believe that it's because the roads are getting better and better. And uh, that's why you find traffic very free in so many areas because there was a time there were constructions almost everywhere in Lagos. Now those constructions are thinning out because they are being completed here and there and so the traffic is a little bit, a little bit freer. But I look forward to a Lagos where traffic will always be free and when, uh, where um, uh, the roads will not go bad every, uh, after every administration. They put the roads in, in order after the administration, the another administration coming will have to fix that same road that was built more, less than five years uh, prior to that. It shouldn't happen. Quality should be quality. The roads that came up, in, maybe in the 60s, done by uh, expatriate companies, are still standing in so many places. Is it because the local content is now more? Or is it because the people who are giving out the contracts, even to these big companies, are cutting corners and the companies are saying, well, instead of leaving or losing out on the business, let's do what we can do with the money that is being given to us. I heard a Chinese, a Chinese talking at one point said, small money, bad road, big money, good road. <laughs> uh, and I laughed, but you know, is the reality on ground. No matter how you see it, every, every businessman will want to make a profit. And if you pay less, they will give you what you want, what you can afford with the money that you give. So if the money is the problem, uh, whoever is giving the contract should do better. If money is not the problem, then people should be investigated and brought to book. People should uh, be monitored while they're doing the work and so many other things. Well, we'll take a short break, look at the weather and see whether it's going to disrupt our activities for today or not. And then when we return, we'll be lifting off the press the headlines uh, that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Once again, good morning to The Breakfast. And this is Plus TV Africa. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Stay with us. <laughs> 